At this time, we're going to be setting up your EGX-20 for plastic engraving. We're going to do so using the .010 cutter as well as the supplied hex tool that comes with your machine. First thing we have to do is go ahead and power the machine on. Once we power the machine on, the machine's going to go through its initialization process. The table's going to move forward, and the carriage is going to move to the right-hand side. Once the machine is done initializing, we're going to install our AS10 sheet. This is an adhesive back sheet, double-sided, which also comes with your machine. We're going to place that on the table, flatten it out. We're going to go ahead and take our engraving stock, and we're going to go ahead and place that on top of our AS10 sheet. And what I do is I press down firmly so that way it adheres to the media. At this point, our next step is to take the machine off view so we can set up our origin point. What we do next is we press the view button. And at this point, the machine's going to move to the origin position. The origin position is always going to be your lower left corner of your material. Once the machine's at this position, we're going to set our XY origin point as well as our Z0 origin point. The next step is to open the top cover of the machine and install our cutter holder. The cutter holder is the brass knob that came included uh, with your cutter tool. Now when installing the cutter holder, the cutter holder itself is a reverse thread. So you're going to reverse thread this on until it's tight. If you need some leverage, you can use your hex wrench to tighten it down. All right, the next step once we've got our cutter holder installed, is to set our origin point. We do so by using the joystick on the control panel, moving it left or right and forward or back to position the nose cone of the unit just over the lower left corner of the material. Once we've got it in that position, we then press the origin button until the origin light comes on. Once we've done that, we're going to move the carriage somewhere over a flat spot of the material. Once we've got it over a flat spot of the material, we are going to press the joystick button in to activate our Z axis. Once the Z axis has been activated, we're going to set our surface. We do so by pressing the origin button. The Z axis will automatically come down to the surface of the material and touch the surface. And at this point, we're going to install our cutter into the cutter holder, and we're going to drop it all the way down to the surface of the material. And at this point, we're going to tighten our hex screw using our supplied wrench until it's tight. Now that we've set up your EGX20 for plastic engraving, we will now set up the bundled software Roland Doctor Engrave. First thing we're going to do is launch our Doctor Engrave application. Once Doctor Engrave is launched, the first thing we will do is set up our print driver. To do so, we'll click on File, Print Setup. From our printer drop down list, we want to make sure we have the EGX20 selected and click on Properties. Once we have the Properties window open, we will click on Advanced. Now the first thing we're going to do in the driver is set up our work size settings. We will be working with a 4x6 work size. We will click on Work Size Settings and Properties. We're going to add a new work size, give our new work size a name, 6x4, We'll be working in inches for our work size settings, and our width is going to be 6 inches, 
and the length will be 4. And click OK. The move to view position we want to turn on. What this will do is once the machine is done engraving, the machine will automatically move the carriage and table to a view position in order for you to remove your engraved job. Since we will be cutting plastic, we want to ensure that the engrave with spindle on option is turned on. We'll be using tool number one for our job. So now we will double click on tool number one and under materials, we can select our material type. We will be engraving on plastic. ABS is the closest thing to that. What this will do is it will install or load default driver settings. These driver settings, however, we will change. We'll click on number one. Our tool width, the tool we will be using is a 0.010 inch tool. However, we will need to convert that into millimeters, which converts to 0.25 millimeters. For the Z speed, we will set it to the maximum speed of 6 millimeters per second. And the XY speed, we will leave at the maximum 15 millimeters per second. Our Z down position is going to be a negative value. And this is how deep we will cut into the material. This depth will depend on the top coat of your material. In our case, we'll be using a plastic from Innovative Plastics. And we will use a Z down position of minus 0.20 millimeters. Our Z up position is our clearance. For our job, we're going to use a clearance of 0 0.40 millimeters. And we want to cut this in one single pass. So we will set our Z engraving pitch to 0 0.20 millimeters. The formula for Z engraving pitch is Z down divided by the number of passes that you want to cut in will give you your Z engraving pitch value. Once we've got the value set, we will click OK. Click OK to our properties and click OK to print setup. Now with Windows 2000 and Windows XP, we will need to go back into print setup and under the paper size option, click the down arrow key and our new page size will now show up. We'll select it and click OK. Now we're going to include some text and a graphic into our engraved piece. The first thing we're going to do is add in text. We can do so in one of two ways. We can use the standard draw text icon and place our text anywhere on the screen, or we can place a text box. This is useful if you need to place your text in a particular area or within a particular area. For our purpose, we will just select the draw text icon. Once we've done so, we will go ahead and click anywhere on our screen. And we can go ahead and type in our text. Once we have the text typed in, we can click on our select object icon. We can move our text anywhere on the screen. We can also expand our text anywhere on the screen. So we can stretch it out as well as resize. If I want to justify this, I can right click on my text, click on properties, and this brings up my text string properties. In this window, I can change my font, change my text height, width, aspect, angle, spacing, as well as line spacing. Also, as far as fonts are concerned, Dr. Engrave will utilize any of your Windows true type fonts you have loaded on your computer. If you need single line fonts, Roland does offer a few 
from the Roland Support website. Dr. Engrave also supports single line font creation. You can actually take a true type font and create a single line font based on it. And for this, please refer to the user's manual. For our text, we will be using a single line font that was downloaded from the web, which is Gothic 1. This is a single stroke font. Also, I'm going to center justify my document and click OK. As you can see, my text now is center justified. Now at this point, I'm going to add in a graphic. And we do so by going under Shape and Symbol. Dr. Engrave comes with a number of pre-made symbols. You can also import a BMP file and Dr. Engrave will automatically vectorize it and place it into your document as well. We also support scanning. We do support Twain32. So if you have a customer logo, you can scan it directly into our software and our software will vectorize it automatically for you. In our sample, we will just be installing a symbol. Select our symbol, click Insert, and Close. If you can notice, our symbol drops in, and at this point, I can take my symbol and resize it as necessary. and I can position it anywhere I want. Now that I've got my job created, I am now ready to output my file. Once you're ready to output, all you would do is click on File, Print, ensure you have the proper machine selected, and then click OK to print.